So my name is George Pavlovic. I'm originally from Serbia and I started dealing with the boats and paddles since I was 10. So I started my first paddling on a Danube. I was 10 years old um, and till today I'm still holding paddle in my hand and still paddling boats. Uh, I was doing professionally racing in a, a flat water kayak and I'm still racing okay just on the local competitions uh, and dragon boating I started in 2008 it was the first time when the first boats came to Cyprus so I began coaching uh, in, two, in 1999 since I came here to Cyprus uh, I was uh, I came actually here for coaching uh, Canoe Federation I was 14 years national coach of the Cyprus Canoe Federation uh, and of course I started with the Famagusta Club until today I am coaching uh, head coach of Famagusta Club uh, kayak canoe team in 2008 first boats came uh, of Dragon Boat uh, of course immediately I got involved because the same philosophy it's a boat it's a paddle they needed people uh, so we established the federation uh, also in the international dragon ball federation uh, we started getting people on the beach it was difficult in the first years people didn't know nothing about uh, dragon boating we were trying to collect uh, always enough people just to take the boat inside the water to carry at least 10 people many times the sea wasn't good enough so it was it was hard in the beginning but until today we have established federation we have five six uh, dragon boat clubs a lot of teams racing competitions international international competitions and so on dragon boat has, has a huge history it's over 2000 years ago it started of course in asian countries in china uh, it started as a legend of a poet who drowned in the river Milo because he was falsely accused for a, for a treason and the villagers because they were in favor for this poet they were uh, uh, gathering going into the boats and beating the water uh, to to for the bad spirits and uh, beating the drums so today uh, they kept this tradition uh of the ancient dragon boat so the drummer on the dragon boat it's mandatory uh, but we have standard standard boats uniform boats uh, it's for 22 people and uh, we have also some smaller category which is which is for uh, 12 people internationally and uh, in china we can find uh, boats of 50 or up to 100 paddlers per boat but this is again tradition uh, in um, 1992 the international dragon boat federation was established and they brought uh, dragon boats to europe starting as the festivals until today where we have every year european championships national uh, international championships world championships and a lot of festivals so in dragon boating uh, there are official distances of 200 meters race 500 meter race 1000 meter race and any type of marathon any distance uh, whenever there is marathon there are uh, included turns so uh, in the straight line we're racing over 200 500 and 1000 whatever has a turn it can be even 2000 as a marathon including that the boat has to turn around a certain boys uh, also what is standardized it's the shape of the boat so like i said they kept the traditional shape of the boat it's usually made of fiberglass and wood uh, 12 and a half meters long with a dragon head a dragon tail there must be a drummer in front active with drumming and a helm person who is steering the boat uh, in the festivals of, uh, and races we have certain categories also it can be open category so consistency of any paddler it can be a mixed category which is usually 50 50 male female paddlers and there is a 
separately female uh, category, which is only ladies racing in one boat. So all, all the boats are uniformed all over the world. They are standardized by the IDBF. So it means whenever we go abroad for races, we don't take our boats. We just take our paddle and we race in the boats of the host, of the hosting organizer. Okay, so one of the things that dragon boating makes very interesting sport is that uh, it's a team sport, uh, but it's not team sport like football, basketball, uh, where one player can make a difference, good or bad. Here, uh, 20 people are paddling together and there is a place for everybody. There are no restrictions in age and gender, uh, size or shape of any paddler. Um, everybody is welcome to the, to the boat. So they are, the front benches are a bit narrower and the last benches are a bit narrower. So uh, for a smaller people in smaller size, uh, then of course for the bigger people, they are the middle benches, which is called the engine room also. So there is place for everybody. Uh, interesting fact also about dragon boating, it's, uh, it's, everybody thinks that because people are sitting and paddling on one side that they're using only hands. But the truth is, it's the full body workout uh, because the connection between paddle and the boat is actually our body. So the power and transition goes through our hands, through our upper body, on the front foot and onto the boat. So it's a full, uh, full body workout. And of course, specifics like synchronization of the boat, team spirit, uh, sense of belonging, uh, tactics in the race. So it's not always that the stronger team will win. It has so many other things important uh, for every race. We, we are doing a lot of these team building events with different companies, with the schools, with younger people, with summer camps, uh, occasionally. Uh, so even people who never had any contact with the boat and the paddle, well, just with a brief introduction, so this is a place where you sit, this is how you position your legs, this is how you call your paddle, so everybody can paddle uh, the basic stroke. So, uh, what is important and what is in the end very complicated is this what I said that it's full body workout. So slowly, slowly, every paddler with the experience is actually with every training is improving. And this is like uh, where, where, where usually people like when they feel that they are exercising good, they feel this, that they belong to the team, they are not anymore out of the synchronization and that, that they are really doing the, the, the efficient stroke, which is for this team sport very important. So it means from the, from the beginning, every next training is improvement. So because like I said, the Dragon Boats are uniformed uh, in size, uh, we don't take kids under 12 on the boat just because size-wise, uh, it's maybe boat is too high, paddles are too big for them. So every other uh, age, it's okay. Like I said, first benches, last benches, even the drummer, usually it's a smaller person, light person. So it can be a, uh, anyone younger or 16 years old. Uh, the mandatory things, it's that all paddlers, including drummer, should know how to swim. Because these boats, as big as they are, they can still capsize. So uh, before every training, before every festival, before every team building event, uh, there is a part of introduction which is about safety. Uh, all people on the boat should, should know how to swim. And of course, if the boat capsizes, the boat will float. So it, the, it's not that the problem. It's like a buoyancy aid for uh, all of us. There is a capsize procedure where we can just flip the boat right side up, take the water out with the buckets and slowly, slowly one by one get in. It's usually done. We are doing this practice two times a year just for fun. And within seven minutes, the whole team is back in the boat. And we can continue our training. So I would say there is no, uh, no big deal, no danger. Uh, occasionally, uh, the what is not fun it's in the race when two boats clashes uh, because of the head the dragon head and dragon tail it can be uh, a bit tricky 
but that's why every steersman, every helm who is steering the boat, it has to have a certified from the IDBF, which by the way, Cyprus is doing the certifications for uh, helms. So it means that pretty much is the safe. This boat, uh, this uh, sport is done in the flat water conditions. So we are avoiding to do in the big waves and uh, uh, in the sea. So it's mostly we are doing these events in the dam, where is the flat water and the races are conducted in the lanes. So there is no, actually there is no danger from the clashes. What we are doing with our paddlers, with our members of clubs, if they bring a kid with them, if it's underage, okay, we put him a life jacket and they can be just part of us. They don't have to paddle, they can sit in a boat and enjoy the ride. So uh, it's not actually this restriction of the 12 years old, it's, it's official restriction for the races. But of course, in our safe environment, there is no problem. We can take kids on the boat, give them life jackets. Uh, they can be part of the team, they can enjoy with us. So there is no problem. Here in Cyprus, we have, uh, we have a couple of uh, clubs that they are dealing only with Dragon Boat like Limassol Spartans that I'm running the Limassol Spartans club. We have a website, uh, Facebook page, Instagram page. Uh, also, there are uh, other clubs doing very good work, uh, connecting a lot of nationalities here. This is interesting. At one point, we had 28 nationalities uh, registered in our federation. It was usually combination between men and female was 50-50. So we cannot say it's female sport or it's a man's sport. It's really, it's mix and we are, every hour training, it's mix of men, male and female. Uh, and like I said, it's available to everyone. Everyone just, just Google about dragon boating and something will be uh, popping up for the local community. We are starting with the friendly race on the 12th of June, uh, just in between clubs. And we are planning for this year on the federation level to organize our national championships. Um, also international championships in October and of course, which is very interesting, the corporate games uh, that uh, we are all going to organize again, I think end of September, beginning of October, uh, which many companies are involved, uh, bringing their teams, their employees uh, taking part. So doing a dragon boat, it's, uh, it takes just wearing sporty things because on the boat, uh, we are not getting wet. It might be some splashes of water, but we are not, uh, we are not soaking wet in the boat. So uh, no special gear needed for dragon boating. Uh, we provide paddles, but many of our paddlers, they are uh, buying their own paddles, which can be wooden, aluminum, fiberglass or carbon made. Uh, there is a minimum charge per training or per month, it's symbolic that every club uh, is charging and the federation just to keep the boat running so we can uh, reinvest, uh, reinvest money to the sport. No one is doing this sport as a business to make money. Uh, it involves uh, a lot of fun. So people like dragon boating, not because of just the exercise, because they like, it's always 15, 20 people around. There is always somebody from the neighborhood. There is always somebody who is making the, the time more fun. Of course, Cyprus, it's very interesting paddling spot because we can paddle 365 days a year. So this is, this is uh, I think it's one of the uh, best countries in Europe uh, to, do, to do this sport because in the winter time, you can still paddle. There is plenty of water in the summer time. Okay, there is a heat, but you can always wear the proper gear, sunglasses, hats, sun creams. Uh, and uh, you can plan your activities every, every uh, race you can plan. And you, you know that the weather will not spoil your organization. So I would say that, uh, and this is, this is one of the goals of, uh, of uh, our federation, of our clubs, to bring more international teams to do their winter training skin in Cyprus. So it means that November, December, January, February, March, where everywhere in Europe 
it's cold and raining and uh, actually not possible to paddle. Here in Cyprus you can paddle in your t-shirt and enjoy uh, your training. Things that, that uh, are making this sport interesting, it's, it's really there is a place for everybody. So there are no prerequisites for dragon boating. Even, even people who are not confident swimmers, they can do their training wearing a life jacket or a buoyancy aid. Uh, so there is a place for everybody. Uh, this, for me, I would say this sense of belonging to the team, uh, it's very important part. Many people don't like to compete at all, but with a team, uh, it's, it's when they belong to a group of people, then this is what they like. So it's not only the exercise why people are coming for, uh, they are coming, we also, after training, we always make coffee, we stay, we talk. Uh, so it, it means that uh, we can give more than just one simple exercise, one hour training and go home.